last thing I want you to stand up. We're gonna start with an activity, okay? I want you to stand up. Um, you need some space, so make sure that the area is clean, that there's no uh, toys around or anything like that. And I want you to stand up, and um, you don't need to stand up on anything, just stand up on the ground. And what, what we're gonna do is, whenever something is hard to do, I want you to stand on one foot, okay? If it's easy, I want you to stand on two feet, okay? Like saying the number one, that should be easy. Doing long division, math problems sometimes, that could be hard, okay? You get the activity? So I hope you have some uh, room, and we're going to start the activity now. Uh, stand up. Um, and be on your feet if it's easy. If it's hard to do, I want you to be on one foot, okay? And make sure you're not standing on anything. Make sure you're standing on the ground. Here we go. All right, this is our base. Everything's good now. All right, eating ice cream. I hope everybody's standing on two feet on that one. That one is super easy. How about cleaning the entire house? That can be pretty hard. All right, reset. How about uh, playing with your best friend? That one's probably another easy one, right? How about making dinner all by yourself from scratch? That can be a little bit hard. All right, let's reset. How about uh, waking up in the morning? That can be hard for me sometimes. Is it hard for you? All right. How about going to bed at night? Is that easy or hard? Okay. What about eating your favorite food? Okay. How about eating your least favorite food? That can be hard sometimes. I'm on one foot. Are you? Okay, you guys get it? All right, how about this? How about sharing your favorite toy? Is that hard or easy for you? Okay. How about this? How about giving away your favorite toy? What about giving your favorite toy away? Is that hard or easy? That should be hard for everybody. I'm on one foot. Like giving away your favorite toys is really hard. And today's lesson, uh, we'll learn about Abraham and Isaac. Right? Abraham was the father and Isaac was the son. And Abraham was asked to give away something that was really, really, really hard. And he did in order to be obedient to God. But there's more. You ready for the lesson? Let's go. Well, today's lesson, it's called Abraham and Isaac. Abraham and Isaac. Last week, we talked about a little bit about who Abraham was and how God made a promise to Abraham, right? God made a promise to Abraham and God was faithful because we can trust in God. And today we'll talk a little bit more about who Abraham is and uh, who Isaac was. And today's lesson is from Genesis chapter 22. Uh, if you haven't uh, read that already, go ahead and read Genesis uh, chapter 22. Go ahead and press pause so you can read the rest of the, uh, the chapter. Uh, and like I said, each week, every time you memorize a verse and send it to me, I will send you something from that chapter, some from that lesson. For example, you know, in the beginning, we talked about how God created the world. That's the first um, Bible card that you can have and you can collect them all, right? Then we talked about how God created people. 
And then we uh, talked about how uh, sin entered the world, right? And that's when uh, uh, people disobeyed God, Adam and Eve disobeyed God, and uh, bad things happened because of that. Then we talked about the Tower of Babel, right? Remember when I climbed the tower that we had here in our gym? And then we talked about Noah and the Ark, right? And on each of these cards that you can collect, on the back of it, you know, it tells you the big idea, the lesson recap, things that we've been talking about. So happy to mail that out to you uh, if you do that. But uh, we've been in Genesis so far and we'll continue to study in Genesis. And this is the story of Abraham and Isaac. God kept his promise to give Abraham a son. And Abraham and his wife, Sarah, they were very old when their son Isaac was born. And one day, God tested Abraham. God wanted to make sure Abraham loved God most of all. I'm sure you guys love something most of all. And God wanted to make sure that Abraham loved God most. Most of all, Abraham, God said. Here I am, Abraham answered. Take your son Isaac to the mountain and give him to me as a sacrifice, God said. And sacrifice means to give something up. Remember the beginning of our activity? How Hard would it be to give up your favorite toy, right? If your parent asked you to give it up as a sacrifice, it would be a hard thing to do. And sacrifice means to give it up. And God is asking Abraham to take his son to the mountain and give his son to God as a sacrifice. And that's really hard to do. But Abraham obeyed God. He got up early the next day and left with Isaac, two servants, and a donkey carrying supplies. And they walked for three days before they got to the mountain where God wanted Abraham to make the sacrifice. Can you imagine walking for three days and what Abraham was thinking? If you had to give up your favorite thing, can you give, can you imagine what it meant to wait for three days while you're thinking about that? And Abraham asked his uh, servants to stay with the donkey and he and Isaac, his son, went up to the mountain with the supplies for the sacrifice. And Isaac, the son, was standing around and he was like, he saw something that was missing. He saw something that was missing. And he says, my father, he said, where's the lamb for the offering? You see, the, there had to be something to sacrifice. And Isaac was asking Abraham, his dad, where's the thing that we're supposed to give up? Where's the sacrifice that we're giving to God? There was no animal. Usually it was a, an animal that was sacrificed. And Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb. Can you say that with me? God himself will provide the lamb. God himself will provide the lamb. That's an important part of the story that I don't want you to forget. God himself will provide the lamb. And when they got to the place God had directed them, Abraham uh, built an altar and placed the wood on top. Right? He built a, a, a little um, place of worship to God, for God. And then he put Isaac on top of the wood. Usually the animal is put there. But this time, Abraham put Isaac, his son, that's a really hard thing that Abraham did. Abraham was about to sacrifice his son Isaac. And just as Abraham was about to sacrifice Isaac, meaning just 
as Abraham was about to say bye to Isaac forever, the angel of the Lord, an angel came and said, called out and yelled out, Abraham, Abraham. And Abraham stopped. He said, here I am. And the angel of the Lord said, do not lay a hand on that boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your only son from me. Abraham looked up and saw a ram. That's a type of animal, like a ram. Uh, it trapped by its horns in the bushes. He offered to God the ram instead of Isaac. And Abraham named that place, that mountain that he was at, he named that place the Lord will provide. Right? Imagine if you were asked to um, sacrifice your favorite toy. But in this context, it wasn't a toy. It was a person. It'd be so hard to give up a sibling, a parent, someone that you love, your teacher, your aunt or your uncle. It'd be hard to do that. And right when Abraham was about to say bye to Isaac, God stopped him and offered a ram, offered this other sacrifice. And the angel of the Lord reminded Abraham that God would keep the covenant. He made with Abraham. Right? God, again, promised to bless Abraham, to make his family as numerous as all the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashores. And God promised victory over Abraham's enemies and blessings to all the earth through Abraham's family. Wow. Well, you might be thinking at this point after hearing that story, that sounds so hard. But let's review our big question, right? Why can we trust God? Why can we trust God? And the answer is we can trust God because He is faithful and does everything for His glory and our good. Right? We can trust God because He is faithful, meaning if God says something, He will do it. If God promises something, He will do it. He won't change His mind. If God says that he will be there for you, he will be there for you. But that means that even when God's plans don't make sense to us, we can trust that things will work out the right way when we obey him. It's important to remember this because what we think is best is not always what God knows is best for us. God's plans are always better than ours. Or sometimes I'm, I'm sure that you might be told something from a parent that you don't understand. They might say, don't do this and do that. Right? Sometimes the plan doesn't make sense. But you know that they are doing it for your good. And they, and if you listen to them, you know that it, they're looking out for your best. And see, with God, see, God is our good Father in heaven. And He knows what is best for us all the time. It might be hard things, it might be sad things, definitely will be happy things. But God's plans are always better than ours. Right, so why can we trust God? He is faithful, right? He is faithful. Man, I can't imagine being asked to sacrifice someone that I know like that. And during those days, offering a sacrifice, meaning to give something up, was a way to show that you love and trust God. Right? Sometimes a sacrifice would be a grain or oil, but often it meant killing an animal. See, when God asked Abraham to off for Isaac, it was a very difficult test to see if Abraham trusted God completely. You see, God had already made a covenant with Abraham, right? God made a promise with Abraham. And God had promised Abraham a large family. And Abraham had to wait so many years for a son. And giving Isaac up would have been especially difficult and scary. Have you waited for something for so long? 
Maybe it's a toy. Maybe it's a treat. Are you waiting for something now? Maybe to see someone or go back to school one of these days. But Abraham showed that he would obey God no matter what God had commanded. See, Abraham trusted God even when he did not understand God's plan. He trusted God even when he did not understand God's plan. And we can get a glimpse, we can see how much Abraham trusted God by what he said to his servants and to how he answered Isaac's question about the lamb. But Abraham asked his servants to stay with the donkey. But the Bible tells us that he said, the boy and I will go over there to worship, then we'll come back. And he told Isaac, God himself will provide the lamb. They went up, not really having an animal with them because they said to keep the donkey there. They didn't have an animal to sacrifice, to give up. They didn't have anything to give up. But Abraham probably did not know that he was going to, what was going to happen on the mountaintop. Right? But he knew that God would keep his promise one way or the other. And God, God did not want Abraham to hurt his son. That's not the point of the story. But God stopped Abraham and provided a ram to be the sacrifice. God didn't want Isaac to be killed and, and God didn't want Abraham to be sad. And so God provided an animal, a ram, to be the sacrifice. And God provided a way for Isaac to be saved. Right, The son, the boy, Isaac was saved because God provided something to replace the son. Right, it's like if you had to give up your favorite thing and you were ready to give that thing up or that person or that item or that object, if you were ready to give that thing up, it's like someone replacing it and you get to keep what you love. God provided a way for Isaac to be saved. And that sounds familiar though, doesn't it? Can you all think of another situation where God promised a way to be saved? Yeah, he sent Jesus. He sent Jesus so that we may be saved. But Abraham showed his love for God by being willing to sacrifice his son Isaac. And God provided a ram instead. And this is how God showed his love for us. He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross so that we could have eternal life through him. See, Jesus came and made a way for us. Just like how God made a way for Abraham and Isaac. And each of us deserves punishment and death because of the sin in our lives. But God loves us. And even in our sin. God does not want us to die and be separated from him. No, that's not what God wants. And that's why God sent Jesus to take our sins. Jesus became that sacrifice. So Jesus died on the cross. But this sacrifice, he rose again on the third day. This proved that he had been he that he had defeated death. And when we believe in Jesus, God forgives our sin and gives us a new life. What an awesome news that is, right? We don't have to be the sacrifice because we can't be good enough. God sends Jesus to be the sacrifice for us. We know that God's covenant with Abraham included a promise of a big family and that would bless the world. Amazingly, uh, this Key passage from Galatians 3.29 I want you to read. It teaches us that when we believe in Jesus, we are included in that promise. We are blessed by Jesus so that we can bless others by telling them about Jesus. I've got some songs for you guys lined up. New, uh, just last week, some new songs for you guys to uh, sing and uh, do the actions about as well. But remember our big question, why can we trust God? 
Right? Why can we trust God? We can trust God because He is faithful and He does everything for our good. And a big idea for today's lesson is this, that Abraham t- trusted God even when he did not understand God's plan. Right? Abraham trusted God even when he did not understand God's plan. And the memory verse that I want you to uh, memorize this week is, God will provide for himself the lamb. Or if your minis are little, that's the memory verse that I want you to memorize. God will provide for himself the lamb. And if you don't know what that means, ask somebody. Ask your dad or your mom or your uncle or your aunt. What does it mean when it said God will provide himself the lamb? And during the bigs at elementary, uh, if you're in bigs at elementary, I want you to memorize this. Abraham himself said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. And that's from Genesis chapter 22, verses 8. And uh, memorize that. Understand what that means. And I will send you one of these um, Bible cards for you guys and um, some activities for you guys to do uh, this week. Um, some videos for you guys to watch as well. And do those activities. Uh, learn about uh, Abraham and the story of uh, Isaac. And um, know that God loves you. I love you. And that we'll see you guys next week.